Hey guys and welcome to Respect Your Intellect. I'm John and in this video we'll be talking about a fundamental flaw with the Flat Earth Theory. Let's get started. Alright, so for this video I'm going to approach this from more of a common sense angle using critical thinking. If you don't know what critical thinking is, you can go check out one of my other videos where I explain it in more detail. Put it right here. So first of all, we need to establish what the flat earth theory is, and that's a cult. A cult is defined as a relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. This isn't to say that all flat earthers are tying this conspiracy directly to the existence of a god, but it definitely ranks as strange. A big problem though is that for the past few years this lack of scientific knowledge has left a lot of people ill-equipped to refute that theory and their numbers have grown. One of the biggest problems that I see all over the place is the combination of two things. The burden of proof is not respected and people not changing their opinions when sufficient facts are supplied. To explain in a bit more detail, the burden of proof is the obligation on a party in a dispute to provide sufficient evidence for their position. Furthermore, there's something called the Sagan Standard, which Carl Sagan proposed that states that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Here's an example. If I hold a potato in my hand and state that this potato is sentient and has feelings, the burden of proof is on me to prove that my claim has substance. I can't just start telling people what I say is true unless you can prove me wrong, otherwise it leaves space for any absurdity that your mind can conjure up. Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, vampires, dragons, magic, spirits, and a ton of other things like that would then be open for discussion. Religion is exactly like that and weirdly enough it's the only thing that's not ridiculed like everything else. But anyway, for a proper claim to be put forth, the person making the claim has to start by showing sufficient evidence for why he or she is making the claim in the first place. Huh? So let's use a bit of critical thinking about this theory now. Assume that a flat earth is a possibility for half a second. I would start by asking two very simple questions. First, why don't they want us to know that the earth is flat? In other words, what do they have to gain by hiding that, that fact? What's the motivation behind it? And second, what scientific theories would have to be invalidated to allow for a flat earth? Let's start with the first one. Why wouldn't they want us to know that the earth is flat? Well, based on my research into this, the main point of flat earthers seems to be that they claim it's to hide God from the population, as if the earth being flat would somehow prove that the Bible is all true. I'm not going to get into religion too much in this video, but let's just remember that their entire claim seems to be based on only this assumption, that NASA and all other world governments want to hide the shape of the earth because the Bible records it as flat. The second question is more interesting. What scientific theories would have to be invalidated for, uh, to allow for a flat earth? We're only going to be looking at two of them here. The first one is the theory of gravitation from Isaac Newton. What Newton discovered is that gravity is universal and that every mass attracts every other mass in the universe in the same manner, depending on mass and distance. If the earth was flat, this theory would have to be wrong because we wouldn't have enough mass in the earth to keep us on the ground. We could quite literally sneeze ourselves into space. This theory has been proven to be right countless times for what it introduced, but it was a bit incomplete when trying to explain a few real world examples like the orbit of Mercury. The second one we'll be looking at is Albert Einstein's general uh, theory of relativity. Einstein's theory stated that instead of thinking of gravity as a force like Newton suggested, we should see it as a be bending of space-time instead. This theory had many predictions, which were all later confirmed to be true. There's the precession problem with the orbit of Mercury, which was solved with the introduction of space-time, so it improved our knowledge of gravity by filling in a missing piece from Newton's law of gravitation. There is also the prediction of time dilation, where time mo uh, moves faster at higher speeds. This is proven every day by your GPS because satellites have to account for the faster time they experience called clock drift. Otherwise, the fix on your position would be incorrect after only two minutes of having started the satellite and would continue at an accumulating rate of around 10 kilometers more incorrect each day. Then there's the gravitational lensing prediction. 
uh, that stated that light would bend when passing near something massive. This was confirmed by Arthur Stanley Eddington during the solar eclipse of May 29, 1919. Since then, we've confirmed this much more accurately using better instruments by measuring the light from quasars passing behind the sun. There's also a time delay of light when it passes close to something massive. This wasn't predicted, but it was discovered later in 1964 by Erwin Shapiro. The reason this happens is due to the increased travel path of light when space-time bends. This discovery solidified general relativity even further. Then there's also the prediction of gravitation radiation, which was also confirmed on February 11, 2016, when the LIGO and Virgo collaborations observed the gravitational waves from two colliding black holes. On top of all that, there's also the prediction of a non-static universe, which Edwin Hubble confirmed in 1929, when he confirmed that the universe is expanding. Funnily enough, that's not what Einstein originally envisioned the universe to be, so he was corrected and even educated by the strength of his own theory. Finally, there's the prediction that light waves coming from objects moving away from you will be stretched and appear more red, while light waves coming from objects moving towards you will be more contracted and appear more blue. This was proven in 1960 and used ever since to collect data about the universe. This theory is so solid that it's able to explain the entire history and future of our universe when it comes to all planetary movements. It also explains the physics of black holes and it explains the bending of light from distant stars and galaxies. Einstein's general relativity is responsible for the GPS system of satellites which powers an incredible amount of things like banking transactions, military ventures, me meteorological analysis, and the GPS positioning that's used constantly <clears throat> and everywhere in the world. Also, just to give even more credibility to Einstein for anyone that has doubts about his contributions, here are more of the technologies or knowledge we have today thanks to him. There's our understanding of complex systems like weather forecast and stock market uh, investments. There's the automatic doors, burglar alarms, uh, solar po panels and digital cameras. There's nuclear weapons, nuclear energy. There's uh, lasers, which powers many things in the scientific field, including but not limited to weather, uh, nuclear fusion and microscopy. It also powers many military applications, such as uh, using lasers directly as energy weapons, defensive countermeasures, disorientation, guidance, target designators, as well as the laser sights on firearms. On top of all that, there's also many medical applications like cosmetic surgery, which includes laser tattoo removal, laser hair removal, eye surgery, laser scalpels, no-touch removal of tumors, assessment of skin health and cancer treatment, as well as dentistry procedures like tooth whitening and oral surgery. As if this wasn't enough, there are also many applications of lasers for industrial, commercial, entertainment, recreational, surveying, even down to using them as bird deterrents. So now we know that a huge part of the technology and knowledge we have today as a civilization is thanks to Einstein and his theories. The theory of general relativity in particular is what made our GPS systems possible, as well as our current most accurate timekeeping. Einstein's theories haven't only been used to explain real-world observations, but also predict a ton of stuff that was all later confirmed. Unless you live in a jungle and have no technology, you are benefiting from Einstein's discoveries even if you weren't aware. So I hope that you're beginning to get a grasp as to just how important Newton and Einstein were, and how much this knowledge helped us develop as a society. Flat Earthers would have to be able to explain why everything that exists in our entire observable universe is perfectly explained by general relativity, from the very beginning to now, but that the laws of physics would only be different for us on a flat disk. Another big problem that I see often is how confrontational flat earthers are and how much they use the word impossible when trying to make their points. So first of all, when you have sound evidence for your claim, there is absolutely no need for a confrontation. The facts should always be able to speak for themselves. Science is not about convincing people to be of your opinion, it's about putting something out that can either be disproved or confirmed by precise real-world experiments. When I say precise, I mean that absolutely no assumptions can be made and everything needs to be accounted for or controlled and calculated. 
This means that a single person without any prior scientific background is very unlikely to confirm or deny anything scientific because their experiments would be so flawed that they would have to restart countless times as new information comes in. Not to say that people shouldn't try and retry, but you as a listener have to always be skeptical of experiments made by amateurs, especially when you see foolish things like people trying to prove a flat earth by looking at their backyards or things of the sort. All right, so now let's talk about us. As human beings, almost 99% of our body mass is made up of six elements, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. Other than that, we have about 1% made up of another five elements, potassium, sulfur, sodium, chlorine, and magnesium. These 11 elements are essential for life and are created through a process called nuclear fusion in the core of stars. This is the process of squeezing an atom's nucleus with more protons. Stars do this during their entire lifetime in gradually increasing stages. At first, they start by fusing hydrogen atoms together, which have one proton, to create helium, which have two protons. Then comes carbon and continues to mix and match while creating many of the elements up until iron. It's at this point that the star will stop being able to generate energy by fusion because it takes more energy to fuse iron than it gives off. The rest of the elements will continue to fuse layer by layer until the star collapses under its own weight. During the last second of its life, the entire core compacts so tightly that it becomes as dense as an atomic nucleus. At this point, no more matter can squeeze into the core and the star explodes as a supernova. In this explosion, more than half of the elements on the periodic table are born and sent out into space. Even elements that couldn't be created in the core will be born with the help of the intense heat and neutron bombardment that comes with the massive explosion. The moral of the story is that everything that we're made up of comes from exploding stars. We're made from the most abundant elements of the universe. So how would flat earthers explain that only our sun is different than every other star we can observe? One of the most beautiful and elegant things about all of these scientific facts is that they apply to anything, anywhere, anytime, and at any scale bigger than the quantum world. If you were to subscribe to the flat earth theory, you would have no choice but to invalidate this theory and countless others that we haven't even mentioned in this video, because things would all have to behave in a different way if we didn't have the mass of the full spherical earth below us. For the flat earth theory, the motivation is for the government to hide the existence of a god, which in itself doesn't seem to return much from the massive investment that this would take. There's also no evidence to support a flat earth that can't be proven false by rudimentary science. And remember that ignorance of scientific facts is not an excuse and will invalidate bad experiments. For the spherical Earth, there is no motivation other than explaining how the real world works. It's just about humanity gaining knowledge on the inner workings of things and manipulating that, that knowledge into tools for our benefit when sufficient knowledge has been gained. For the flat Earth theory, you would have to invalidate everything that Newton discovered about gravity, which by extension would also invalidate Einstein's theory of general relativity because none of those would work without a uh, full spherical Earth mass below us. Huh? This means that you would have to re-explain the orbit of Mercury, the deflection of light as it can be seen during an eclipse, huh? the time delay of light when passing close to a massive body, the gravitational waves predicted in 1916 and observed in 2016, how and why our universe is expanding, the red shift of light emitted from objects moving away from you, and the clock drift that our GPS satellites experience constantly. Another important thing to keep in mind is that the shape of the Earth was validated since ancient Greece 2300 years ago without any technology. Aristotle figured out that during lunar eclipses, when the Earth passes between the Sun and the Moon, the Earth always uh, casts a round shadow uh, on the Moon. This would not be possible with a flat Earth unless the Moon was always directly overhead. Otherwise, we would see shadows shaped anywhere from a line to an ellipse. Uh, he also noted that ships sailing off into the horizon would have the bottom part going out of view before the top part, which can only happen on a spherical Earth. And finally, he noted that the North Star is overhead in the north, near the horizon at the equator, and out of view in the southern hemisphere, because it's below the horizon. Did the ancient Greeks also make up these facts to try hide God from the population like NASA? How do you even explain them today if you were on a flat Earth? 
The evidence supporting a spherical Earth has been overwhelming for over 2,000 years. Flat Earthers only depend on a few handmade specific cases they can't explain to then call a spherical Earth impossible. Scientists can refute any flat earth argument very quickly because we already have the knowledge. Flat earthers, on the other hand, need to invent foolish things to explain things that they would have never been able to explain with proof. We talked about lunar eclipses before. To explain that, flat earthers made up a shadow object that goes around the sun to cast a shadow on the moon and has somehow never been seen, even with our incredibly precise and capable instruments today, because it's too close to the sun. With something being that close to the sun, it would need to orbit so fast to not fall into the sun that we wouldn't see a gradually moving shadow on the moon. It would be fleeting. So again, nothing they come up with is reconcilable with real world observations. Now let me leave you with this thought. How likely do you think it is that all governments in the world got together, came up with a massive conspiracy to hide the shape of the earth, just made up these scientific facts, got all scientists, especially astronomers, to go along with this and continue fabricating lies that are somehow all verifiable, that we also blindly develop technology that works, even though we wouldn't be able to explain how, and kept everyone involved completely quiet about it? I know on which side of this argument I want to be. You can decide for yourself. Huh? If you like this video, consider subscribing and leaving a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you have any suggestions about what you'd like to talk about, put it down in the comments below or come follow me on Twitter or Facebook. Links are in the description. Until next time, thanks for watching and remember, respect your intellect.